Good evening, family. This is Frank, and I'm sitting in my favorite place. Um, I've always been kind of like at home on the floor, and uh, I'm sitting in my favorite place in my bedroom, just sitting on the floor next to my bed, and you know, just thinking on the Lord, thinking on the presence of the Lord, and I'm doing a um, devotion right now. Um, from my little devotional book, and it's entitled, it's a, it's a scripture from Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5, and it's only, each devotion is a word from the Lord, and then it's, you know, there's space to write. It's just one little verse of scripture, and then you just meditate it. It says in the, in the book of, of Psalms, it says, blessed is the man who meditates on the, on the on the law of the Lord, or the, the Torah of the Lord, the law of the Lord, the word of God, day and night. That man is blessed. That man is, you know, just to meditate, to take the word of God and verse by verse, line by line, precept upon precept, and just to study the word and to just meditate on it. And I love this little devotional book because it's one verse at a time and then you just meditate and you write whatever the Lord is leading you um, and, and, and guiding you in. And right here is, is Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding you can you can pre you can preach volumes off of that you know i love preachers um uh, there, there was a woman in my old church her name was sister jenny statum and she used to say things like preachers today and this is back in the in the 90s the mid 90s she said preachers today they think they're so smart with all their degrees and with all their knowledge and all their the supposed understanding, they, they know so much. And even so more today, we think we know so much. We think we know so much. We're so educated. Dr. Ravi Zacharias used to say, we have educated ourselves into imbecility. You see what's going on today in, 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 in universities that were dedicated to the Word of God, like Harvard and Yale and Princeton and all these different universities, you know, Temple University in Philadelphia. It was all these, all these, all these universities started out as theological seminaries, and now they're so far from God, so far from God. And Ravi Zacharias said, "We have educated ourselves into becoming imbeciles. We've educated ourselves into becoming ignorant." We're so smart that we've become fools. Trust in the Lord with all our heart and lean not into your own understanding. When I think of that, I think of what I'm going through right now. I've been, something's been heavy on my heart uh, since Friday. A good brother of mine, Ken, passed away unexpectedly. And when I say unexpectedly, I mean unexpectedly. The brother was, I believe he was 38 years old. And it, it just breaks my heart to have lost him. He, he, he was a dialysis patient who had undergone kidney transplant. So he wasn't on dialysis anymore. But what blew my mind about Ken was he was one of these guys that he didn't let nothing stop him. In some ways, he was an angry little guy. He was, he was angry at, at hurt that was in his life. He was angry at the way his family treated him sometimes and the way uh, relationships, he, he didn't seem to have any any great uh, relationships with women and, and, and it left him kind of jaded. Some of the relationships he had were, were kind of negative and, you know, um, it hurt him greatly. He just wanted love. He just wanted life. And I met Ken at church. 
And what I liked about Ken is you, what you saw is what you got. Like the old saying goes, what you see is what you get. And Ken was one of these guys, I'm trying to adjust this. Ken was one of these guys that, you know, he didn't put on airs. And when he was upset, he was upset. When he was angry, he was angry. When he was happy, he was happy. And he didn't lie. He didn't put on a show. If he didn't like you, he let you know. And I thank God for people like that. I'd rather have an angry little man as a friend who's honest and is trustworthy than someone who puts on a show when people are around and puts on a show, you know, to try to impress people that don't really care about you. Ken didn't put on airs. And we lost him suddenly that day. I believe he passed away on fr on Thursday or Friday. We still haven't talked to his family. And it, and, it, and it weighs heavy on my heart. But just like it says in that proverb, to trust in the Lord with all your heart, to lean not on your own understanding. Because my understanding, I'm in grief right now. This was a brother. He impacted me, and he was just as much a friend to me as he was to my son. He was a friend, and he was a brother. And my understanding is grief right now. My understanding is pain right now. My understanding is, why, Lord? Why did this man, this brother of mine, who we had plans, we, we used to plan our futures together like little kids do. We wanted to... We, we wanted to uh, have a homestead and we wanted to raise animals and we wanted to you know I wanted to get married and he was he wanted to get married and we wanted to have our families close by and we had all these dreams and we were we were putting forth effort to have it and make it so and we didn't let our disability stop us I got one leg and he was on kidney dialysis and and he was pushing forward, and I was pushing forward, and, and we had dreams that said, no matter what, we're going to do this by God's grace. And we met in church doing devotions like this, having small group and having devotions just like this, where we took the Word of God in a small group, in a small setting, and we we learned together, and we prayed together, and we preached to each other, and we cried together. And when I was leading a Bible study on Wednesdays, there were times that I, had, I couldn't make it because of doctor's appointments, times I couldn't make it because I was in a hospital, and Ken would lead for me. And our pastor at the time said, are you sure he's ready? Are you sure he's ready to lead a Bible study? And I said, I try, he might be a little different, but I trust this man. I trust him. He was a brother. But my understanding is hurt right now. My understanding is pain right now. But I thank God for that secret place. Oh, Heavenly Father, I thank God for that secret place. I thank God for that place. I preached recently on the secret place of the Most High God. I preached on that. That there's a darkness that entangles. There's a darkness that will rob you of your future. That will rob you of your destiny. Because of the sin that has entered your life that entangles you. And Ken was acquainted with that. But I trust the Lord with all my heart. And I lean not on my understanding. My understanding is, is that I'm hurting right now. My understanding is that I'm in pain right now. A piece of me has been cut. But I love my brother. And I love the, the memory I have of him already. I love the way we met in the house of prayer. And he didn't consider himself a typical Christian. Because he saw so much hypocrisy. And hypocrisy in the, in the church was, was something that agonized him when preachers say one thing and do another 
and then they get caught up in all type of drama, get caught up in all type of scandal and, and ridiculousness, and it just keeps going on and on. And he, it just drove him crazy because it was so real and he saw it. These people that we entrusted our souls to as fathers, as brothers, and there were lies being said. Politics became more powerful than the call of God over their lives. <coughs> Excuse me. But we trusted in the Lord together, and we, and we would have Bible studies together. We would go camping together, and we would, we would, we would have devotions together, and what does the word say about this? And what is what how's the Lord leading you on that? And and let's let's you know what's got my gifting that God has called me to, and what's your gifting? And let's let's put it all together and let's 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 wrestle over this scripture and, and, and put it against what we're going through in our lives and, and and let's do it together as brothers and and and, and we saw growth in each other. But even though I'm hurting according to my understanding and in my heart, I lean not on that. I don't lean on that. Because if I lean on that, I'll fall. If I lean on that, I'll crumble. But I lean on the Lord. I trust in the Lord with all my heart. I trust in the Lord past everything I know. I trust in the Lord past my hurt. I trust in the Lord past my pain. I trust in the Lord past my agony. I trust my in the Lord past my 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 fear of the future. Past my I don't think I could make it. Past the naysayers. Past people who have all everything to say and not and have not been there for me. They say they're going to be there. They say they love me, but they where are they? But I trust in the Lord. Ken trusted in the Lord past all of that. He had faults. He was angry. He was mad. He was frustrated over some of the situations. But he trusted in the Lord. Deep down inside, he knew better. And that's what drew us closer. Through our pain, through our hurt, our toils, through the diagnosis, through the doctor's appointments, through the, through the disabilities, through everyone saying what our limitations were. And we dare to have hope because the word of God is a message of hope. We dare to have hope. We dare to take God at his word. We dare to trust him. And that's my devotion to you today, family, from the bottom of my heart. To the depths of my soul, trust in the Lord with all your heart. I dare you to pick up the word and find a scripture that has everything to do with what you're going through and quote it back, pray it back. If you have to do it all night on your knees, find that secret place like Jacob had to rest his head at a place called Bethel, the house of God. And he named it the house of God because the Lord ministered to him there. The Lord ministered to him there. He was no longer a deceiver by being named Jacob the deceiver. He became known as Israel because he wrestled with God. He wrestled with the Lord. He refused to give up. He held on and he held on. And when he felt like giving up, he refused to give up. And he, became, he was found prosperous there. Because he found that secret place of the Most High God. He trusted in the Lord. He was no longer going off his father Isaac's testimony. He was no longer going on his grandfather Abraham's testimony. But he had a story to tell all by himself. And he trusted in the Lord with all his heart. And he leaned not on the deception that was his past, but he pressed forward to the future by hope, by faith. And we honor Ken today. I was on a prayer walk in my closing. I was on a prayer walk this morning, just walking, thanking the Lord for the ability to walk with my prosthesis. And I was walking for about an hour and a half, and, and Ken 
was born and raised around here in Concord and Kannapolis area. And so I was walking by his apartment where he lived with his mother. And I was walking down the streets that I know he was a great walker. He was always walking. He always carried a, a walking stick. And I was walking the streets praying. And, I, and in my mind, I was picturing Ken. And I, and I was saying, Lord, I'm walking the streets of this man. His, his memory will not die with, with, with him. And he lives on in my mind. He lives on in eternity, in the in in in, 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 in all eternity, and the future that God has for his life. Sleep, waiting on the call of God to wake up. And I was just thinking about him and how I could honor him. And I said, I'm going to do a devotion today. And my house church was supposed to meet today, but due to unforeseen circumstances, they didn't have house church tonight. So I said, I think the best way to honor Ken is to continue to do what we were doing and what we were known for. We were known for devotions. We met doing devotions. We met doing Bible studies active Bible studies. Now we do this stuff online because of the pandemic and different things. But I'm going to get back to doing more devotions to honor my brother. And we used to go camping and we loved campfires and we would tend the fire all night long and we would talk about the Lord. We would talk about our relationships, our failures, our successes. And I said that's what I'm going to do to honor him. And Anyone local is welcome to join us at the lake in, in uh, China Grove. We're going to meet at the lake. Message me if you want to know where it's at. I thank God for, the, for those who follow me and those who message me based upon my little talks. But you're welcome to come. In two weeks, we're going to meet there. On a Saturday at 2 p.m. And we're going to have hamburgers and hot dogs and drinks and snacks and stuff. And we're going to have a devotion to honor Ken. And the, more importantly, to trust in the Lord with all our heart. Through our pain. Through our torment. And then my son, he doesn't know this. Manny, I hope you're watching. You probably will. I know you watch a lot of my devotions. But you don't know yet. But we're planning a camping trip at the shore in North Carolina so that we can do the same thing with you because I know you're you're three and a half hours away and you can't be here like you want to so we're gonna bring the party to you and as soon as the weather breaks probably beginning of April we're gonna have a camping trip out at the shore so that you can be a part of it too and we can honor Ken that way because that's what we do. The church moves on. Like the saying goes and the beat goes on. We have lost many through the years. We have lost loved ones and people that we care about and family members and brothers and sisters and mothers and fathers. We have lost them through many ugly ways. And we've lost them through natural means. And we know Ken's departing here was, was God's timing and God's plan. No one can take this life unless the Lord allows it. And the Lord allowed it that Thursday. And we honor Ken and we honor his memory tonight. Those of you that know the word of prayer, pray for me and pray for our church and pray for his family. Pray for Ken. His family who's going through. Pray for understanding. So that we will lean on. Not what we know. Not what our experience. They say in the world experience is the best teacher. But that's a, that's a flat out lie. Obedience is the best teacher. Obedience over our counselors. That give us godly counsel. Obedience over our 
our leaders that give us godly counsel, obedience over the word of God, obedience over Christ alone first, and the Holy Spirit, our Father, obedience is the best teacher. You don't have to experience, you're going to experience a bullet through the heart. You didn't learn nothing. You're dead. But you can learn through obedience to stay away from that crowd. And now you learn something. Stay away from that crowd that does them things, that hangs around with them people, that takes you down the wrong path in life. And you might live a little longer. But we thank God for Ken tonight. I thank God for Concord. I'm praying daily. We're walking the streets of Concord. We're walking the streets of Kannapolis in prayer. We believe in the power of prayer. We're dedicating our, our homes, our apartments back to the Lord and asking that our, our communities, our apartment complexes, our homes, our streets, our neighborhoods are changed by the power of the Lord, by the blood of the Lamb, by the words of our testimony we overcome. And we believe God to change things. Gracious God, our Father, we pray for our community. We pray for our homes. We pray for our neighborhoods. Lord God, we plead the blood of Jesus. We ask you that you would rule and reign over our lives. That we, you would change and transform us. You would mold us and shape us after your will. Lord God, that we are able to overcome by the word of the Lord, by the word, blood of the Lamb, and the word of our testimony. Your word is true. And we don't care what heaven and the earth will pass away, but your word will stand. Lord God, we'll see destruction and mayhem. We'll th see things falling apart around us. But Lord God, your word is a sure foundation. Your word is a solid rock that we can stand on. And we can overcome by your word. We can stand by your word. We can live by your word. We call on your name for power in this dark and evil day. We plead the blood over our babies, Lord God. We plead the blood over our family. We plead the blood over our neighborhood. We plead the blood, Lord God. We plead the blood. We plead the blood. We plead the blood. It's too late. No more false intentions or intentions of the heart. Lord, we always say, God knows our heart. Yeah, he knows our heart is desperately wicked. That's what the Bible says. Our heart is desperately wicked. He, doesn't, he knows your heart is truly wicked. But God, but God chose us before the foundation of the world. I love you, family. Thank you for this time we spent. Send me messages. Continue to support me, and, and I'll support you. Let's share these devotions. Let's share, and let's get together, and let's pray. Let's get together and break bread. Let's get together and follow the command of the Lord. As we see these things happening, as we think, see what's going on around us, that we forsake not the fellowship of the saints because iron sharpens iron and we, and we, get, we are stronger and greater together by the blood and the power of our Lord and Savior. Love you, family, and God bless and thank you.